Hey, Curtis with Fly Fish Food. I've got an awesome scud pattern with a little twist. This is a balanced fly, but a little twist at the end will give it an extra secret sauce. Check it out. Dude, that's a big brown bro. We will get started here with the uh, hook and the vise. Now, with these offset beads, and this is one of the reasons that I use them, they will tend to push the center of mass of the fly both out and down, down meaning the direction away from the hook uh, tip, which means this should invert. And it should be relatively balanced. Anyway, the, the story behind this one is, uh, uh, if you haven't seen already, Fulling Mill has a, uh, it's called a drop back bung. It's an indicator, it's a style of indicator that, um, Anyway, it's tough to explain. We will have some videos on it. Google it up on our website. Uh, but the, the way that that indicator works is that it is uh, cocked or, or it will stand upright at the balance point based on the weight of the flies that you have on your rig. So you, you can have a certain amount of weight total. Anyway, uh, this, the Scud Rocket, is a one of several that we are working with that fall within those weight categories that will allow us to um, have the fly balanced and cock that uh, indicator. And anyway, the reason that we're doing this is because in, in general terms, if you think of a, a bug when it's in the water naturally, like a scud, obviously the, this is gonna go inverted and it will look like this, which means that anything on the top of it, such as the the little shellback resin is going to be tied upside down. So a lot of the fly tying on this one was going to be inverted. But what we want is we want that as it floats to be kind of um, in that orientation somewhat balanced and not just hanging vertically. Uh, scuds typically don't just hang there vertically. They will have some level of movement uh, laterally. So that's what this is for. The other thing is, um, and I would, at the very end, I'm going to throw a little twist on this one that I think makes it go to 11. If you're a Spinal Tap fan, you know what that means. Anywho, uh, I'm going to start off just getting that thread dam built up behind the eye of the, or behind the, the bead there. And this is going to invert. We don't need to invert it yet. We'll just go ahead, work our way back. And then once we're above where, let's say the barb would be, I'm going to grab my Glow Bright. And this is just a multi-strand material. I tend to do these in, depending on what size you're doing, but I'll do them in uh, I'll fold this over twice, so we're essentially creating four little um, fibers. And then on this one, this is a little, this is a little bigger size, 14. I'll do that once more. So basically, eight strands. Do, do, do. And I'm going to make the final doubling of this over um, after I tie it in. We'll just pull this back, and then. That will help kind of even those out like that. And then just a couple of wraps to tighten it up and then we'll just trim it. So the idea of this, obviously scuds don't have a giant flaming tail. This is simply a hot spot. So we'll cut it, I don't know, a couple beads distance length there. Again, just a hot spot. It's not, not gonna serve any, any imitative, imitative purpose. Okay, now what we'll do is um, we're going to use a, a dubbing loop ultimately for this, but um, in its simplicity, you could, if you wanted, tie in a like a wing case shell back, something like um, Nymph Wrap or Scud Skin Micro in this case from Fulling Mill. Um, if you wanted to, this helps build a little bit better foundation. I'm not going to use it in this example so that it would cut out uh, one of your materials, but it is something you could use if you want to. All right, so in order to construct my dubbing loop, just simply grab any one of many dubbing loop tools. I like this one here that I have with the bearings I've had for years. And I'm going to go and create a loop that's roughly three times the hook shank length. Wrap that around a couple times, lock it in place. So now I've got an independent to my thread dubbing loop. And I usually just pull and set that down in the, uh, the handle a little bit. 
and then we're just going to work our way forward where we'll tie off. So this is super simple, but it's a very, uh, I think, interestingly functional pattern. And now for the dubbing, and this is where you can get kind of uh, creative to match the insects that are in your neck of the woods. So being that it's a scud, we're typically imitating uh, freshwater shrimp, scud, whatever you want to call them. And they come in a variety of colors and shades. So if it's me, I'm going to have the, my go-to is this psychedelic done. Another really good one is the psychedelic tan. This is the ultra nymph dub. We'll list these will all be in the recipe in the description below. Um, but they have some iridescence. Now the cool thing is, sorry for that big sound. I'm lighting this up with a UV light. You can't really see it on the the uh, camera as much, but these fibers pop like nobody's business. That basically will hypnotize the fish and force them, literally force them against their will to eat this. Maybe not against their will. And I realized that my bead was not seated, so I'll lock that in place there. Okay, again, this is super simple. We're just gonna do a simple dubbing loop. I'm grabbing my uh, dubbing material. I'll go ahead and fill the loop and then we'll twist her up. Now one thing you do not want to overdo it, so I've got two healthy clumps, maybe not healthy, they are eating correctly sized clumps. And again, just about that much. And then I'll do this in a couple different steps. First, I, I like this stubbing spinner because it has bear, bearings in this thing here. And we just simply spin that up. It creates a tidy little dubbing loop. Now, if I need to, I can grab the famous Stonfo Velcro dubbing teaser. And what I'm doing is just tapping because I want to pull the fibers out. I don't want to remove them. So that gets us a little bit of... Uh, bugginess. And then rather than have a bobbin cradle, I will simply hold that dubbing loop or the, uh, sorry, the thread out to the end and then just touching turns all the way down. Like so. Tie that off. A couple of locking loops and then we'll just cut the tag end. Okay, so there is the body. And now that I'm done tying, I can actually whip finish this off. Uh, it Depending on where I ended it with my uh, thread and the dubbing, you may want to throw a few more loops, a few more wraps in there. And I'll do that to also make a, another little micro hot spot. And again, my favorite whip finisher is this TMCO Midge whip finisher. And by habit, I do a couple, but I'm going to resin this baby. These, these uh, wraps are not coming undone. Okay, now, realistically, you could take this down there and fish it, and you'd, be, you'd do just fine. But I'm going to now show you what I do is kind of a secret sauce on this guy. So we're going to invert it now, and this is the way it should be riding. Now I'll take my thumb and forefinger and simply preen the fibers down and just pull them like so. And then I'm going to get in there and look to see if I have any obvious strays and just come straight across with my scissors and just snag as many of those as I can. These are the ones that are kind of above my plane of view, so it helps if you do that with your other hand too. That way you can preen and clip at the same time. It doesn't have to be super clean, but it does help when we're applying our uh, resin. Trim, trim. Okay, now we've got big old shocker hairdo going on. Okay, now, and here's part one of this finishing piece that... Uh, I'm very fond of. Now we're gonna create this, the back on this scud. Again, this is more to imitate what the scud looks like where it's 
its back, its exoskeleton is, is kind of uh, hard looking and certainly not very buggy, but underneath is where all the legs and stuff are, so we want this part to be fairly buggy. So I'm going to grab some solar res, and this is the thick, hard, and this helps us set a base for the resin. And so what I'll do is I'll just take one hand, hold the resin, the other hand, preen the fibers downward, and then I'm just going to lay a very thin but consistent layer, eventually when this comes down. And I'll steady my hand and just let this go to the length. Okay, now I don't want this to sit very long, but I do need to work it in a little bit there like so. Okay, and you can kind of see how that's sitting on top of there, and that's really what I'm after. And if you need to, you can work that with a bodkin. I'm happy with it now, so we're just going to zap it with the light. Fingers get a little suntan. And with UV, typically the stronger the light or bigger the light in this case, this is the Loon Plasma torch light. The most powerful one that there is, it's rechargeable. And uh, so that's gonna be cured on there. Now, you could leave that like that and kind of work that in, but what I found is that, and this is the secret sauce, is the fluorescing UV clear fly finish. Now granted, you, you don't have to use two types. I tend to use two types when I'm doing this style of fly. This is a lot thinner and it will fill in the gaps and it will give this fly a little bit of a coating. I'm gonna show you, so here's before, and obviously the fibers kind of light up, you can see that. But what I'll do is I'm going to apply the actual uh, fluorescing stuff and then you'll see what a difference that makes. So we'll just get on here and a little too much. I'm just going to dab. We'll do this in a couple of layers, but because this is so thin, you don't have a ton of working time, so I'll, that's why I do it in two layers. And then we'll cure that. And then you can see now, as I'm curing that at the very top, you see how that reflects a lot better. And if you're to believe the hype around UV, which I somewhat do, I've had some good experience that show how well it does. Um, it does make a difference on maybe attracting fish. Now you'll see I got a little uh, resin down in the eye of the hook. Just going to clean that out to make sure I can thread the tip it in there. All right, so we're good there. A little uneven, but that's not a huge deal. And I'm just gonna go in with the second layer now and kind of finish it off. And that will naturally sort of fill in those gaps and allow it to settle down and be a little bit smoother. All right, so just put a finishing touches on that. And now I'm gonna trim. Don't need the legs that long. Okay, so we kind of preened that, made sure the dubbing looks good uh, upside down. So again, we're doing two coats. One is for the, the solar res is for the body aspect, and then the UV fluorescing is uh, more of a fish getter, but also a fill in the gaps. And so the way I would fish this, again, would be largely an indicator rig. Um, if you haven't checked out the drop back bungs from Foley Mill, those work great. Um, you could also use that on any, you know, if, if you had, say, an intermediate line or a midge tip or uh, wherever you are, whatever you want to do, you know, it's, it can be fished um, both uh, horizontally as well as just uh, vertically on an indicator. Anyway, give that a try. All the links down below in the description. Great pattern, uh, good hotspot, quite the fish getter.